Here at the World Equestrian Center, our design team builds obstacles for horses to have to jump over. And some of these obstacles are very difficult and hard to negotiate. The one thing that we do different uh, with our church services is that we like to make things simple and easy to understand. And I'm Chaplain Larry Spielman, and I invite you to take a few minutes just to listen to what God may have to say to you today. Well, as I said, uh, today is Easter, and for the last uh, six weeks, and today will be seven, uh, we have been looking at the statements that Jesus made from the cross. And uh, they're pretty powerful words that he shared. And, and, you know, I think that it's important for us to take note of them. They were the last things that he said uh, here in his earthly ministry before he, uh, before he died. And so uh, those are powerful things. You know, we usually like to listen. If somebody's saying something before they're going to pass away, that, that has a lot of weight to it. And so uh, what Jesus was saying uh, really meant something. Uh, the first week that we talked about uh, what he said in forgive them, Father, they don't know what they're doing. Can you imagine asking God to forgive people who are actually putting you to death, torturing you and uh, mistreating you? Uh, he said they, they didn't know what they were doing and, and Jesus asked for their forgiveness. Uh, the second week we talked about two tickets to paradise. Uh, you know, the thief on the cross. Uh, said, remember me. And Jesus said, you will be with me in paradise today. Uh, I, I was listening to some clips this week. You know, that, that thief, he really didn't have the normal uh, way to get to heaven, right? I mean, we've got all of these steps that we have to go through. We've got all of these ways that we tell people this is how you get to heaven. Jesus uh, just said to this guy, you're going to be there with me. Uh, you know, when he got to heaven, he didn't have any credentials. He didn't have any, anything to say other than uh, the guy on the middle cross said I could come. And, you know, really, that's, that's us today. Um, this, the third week was about friends and family. You know, Jesus said he wanted to take care of his mother, so he told his uh, uh, disciple, John, take care of uh, this woman. She's your mother from now on. And, and Mom, here's your son. And so they, they stayed together, and he cared for her. Uh, the fourth week was about the truth about sin. You know, Jesus asked God, why have you forsaken me? When we realize the ugly truth about sin and what Jesus suffered for us, and what he went through for us because of our sin, it helps us to realize uh, the ugliness of it and the, and the pain of it and how much Jesus uh, paid for our sin. So a lot of times we, don't, we do things and we don't realize uh, how uh, terrible they really are in God's economy and what God thinks about them. Uh, the fifth week was Jesus saying, I thirst. You know, his humanity came through, who he was. He was 100% God, 100% man. And, you know, he could have come down off the cross. He could have, he could have uh, done whatever he wanted to do. But he stayed there for us. And because of that, at one point he said, I'm thirsty. And so they gave him a, a, a sponge with some sour vinegar on it. Uh, but his humanity was showing through. He was showing that he suffered just like you and I suffer. He goes through the same things that you and I go through. Uh, it's important for us to understand that. And then last week, uh, the words that he said, it is finished. That means that everything that was necessary, whatever he had to do to accomplish God's purpose, it was all done and taken care of. It's all over. There's nothing else that you and I can do today to accomplish salvation. Jesus has done everything that's necessary. It's just up for you and I to decide that we'll accept that, that we'll take that. Uh, we, we, we come to him and we ask for forgiveness and the acceptance of him as Lord in our life. And so that's where we were. Today, we're looking into the book of Luke in chapter 23, uh, and I've titled this message, Reunion. Um, in verse 44, it says, It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, for the sun had stopped shining. No wonder. And the curtains of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And when he had said this, he breathed his last. You know, every one of the Gospels carries this last little bit. Uh, most of them just say that he cried out with a loud voice. But Luke actually says what he said. You know, into your hands I commit my spirit. You know, I believe at that moment all of hell was rejoicing. They thought they had finally accomplished 
everything they had been trying to do since the beginning of time. The Son of God was dead. Can you imagine what they were thinking at that point? I don't know if you've ever seen The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, C.S. Lewis's uh, movie, but uh, when I think about this, this scene, I think about Aslan, the, the uh, lion, you know, uh, that was representative of Jesus, and how he was drugged to this altar, to this, to this uh, concrete pad, and he was, he was killed there on that pad, and all of the excitement and the joy that the demons felt when they saw that Jesus was dead or that Aslan was dead. That's how heaven seen all of this. And you know what? Uh, the world was in sorrow. The world was in grief. But the, but the devil, the enemy of our soul, he was rejoicing. It was one of the best days of his life. A friend of ours, uh, Lawrence Bishop, uh, wrote a song, and it's on YouTube. It's called A Bad Day for the Devil. He didn't realize how bad this day was. While he was rejoicing and how he was all happy about all of it, he had no idea what was going to come out of this. So it wasn't just a good day uh, for him, even though he thought it was in his, in his angels. Uh, I, I just really believe that the world never really understood how desperate we were for Jesus and his life here. He'd been faithful through everything, and now it all looked hopeless. Can you imagine standing around the cross watching this person who had come and had done all these miraculous things, made all of these promises, all of these, all of these things that he had said that he was going to do, and here now he's dead. You know, you think it's difficult to leave the cemetery after we've laid a loved one to death, or to, to, in death, in the grave. And you know, here these folks were having to go back home thinking about what had happened to Jesus. How disappointed everyone must have been. Everybody was left with the reality, Jesus is gone. That was Friday, but Sunday was coming. <laughs> you know, you might ask the question today, why did Jesus have to die? I mean, couldn't there have been some other thing that was done that could have accomplished the same kinds of things? You know, if you look at Jesus in the garden, one of the things that Jesus was asking God in the garden, if there's some other way, let this cup pass from me, I, but, but your will should be done. But if there's something else that could happen that I wouldn't have to go through this, that I wouldn't have to die, uh, isn't there some other way? And God was silent at that point. Really, his answer was, no, <laughs> there's no other way. This is how it has to be. You know, anytime someone passes away, we always try to figure out what is the purpose in that death. You wonder, what was the purpose of Jesus' death? I'm sure everybody there that day was wondering that. Well, how could this be? What, what are we supposed to make of this? What are we supposed to take away from this? I think when we try to find purpose in someone's death, it's just a natural thing that we do. We try to come up with an excuse. We try to come up with something that makes sense. You know, we ask all kinds of questions. Uh, you know, it's even worse, it seems like, when a young person passes away. Why? Why did this have to happen? Why did, why did you know, somebody not do something different? Or why didn't God step in? You know, over and over again, we ask all of these questions. We try to explain it. You know, I think that uh, we need to be careful that we're not always trying to bring consolation or comfort to people by trying to explain what we think really happened. You know, a lot of times we offer platitudes and uh, cliches. Oh, God needed another angel. Or, you know, he picked the prettiest flower. We say all kinds of things like that to try and encourage people. But in reality, on this side of eternity, we can't make sense of it. There's only one thing that we can really do for each other, and that's to just hold each other in our arms and let people cry and encourage them that there's a better day coming. We don't have to explain it. 
And I don't think anybody had any clue how to explain what happened to Jesus that day on the cross. You know, death had reigned since Adam and Eve. They were told, God told them when he put them in the garden, you can do anything you want here. Take care of the garden, eat anything you like except this one tree. And when you eat of that one tree, you will surely die. And we know the story, right? They didn't listen to God. They did their own thing. Sometimes I think, Adam and Eve, what in the world? Did you have a clue what you were doing to the rest of us? But the reality is you and I probably would have done the same thing, given the opportunity. We always oh, say we wouldn't, because, but we got 20-20 hindsight, you know, looking back on all the trouble. But if we were there, human nature, the enemy tempting we probably would, have, probably would have done the same thing. But they did. And they brought this curse on all of humanity. And you know, this death of Jesus really became the ultimate payment for the curse that had been on the world for thousands of years. All of humanity had suffered death over and over again. Oh yeah, they lived a long time uh, back in the book of Genesis, 900 years I'm not sure I want to live 900 years in this world, are you? I mean, you know. <laughs> but no matter how long their life was, it always ended in death. And Jesus needed to settle that score. Jesus needed to bring something into reality uh, that was greater than death, that he could stop the curse, that he could change the course of history. And Jesus' death did just exactly that. In Romans chapter 5, uh, beginning at verse 17, I love what it says. For if by the trespass of one man, death entered through that one man, how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ? Consequently, just as one trespass resulted in condemnation for all people, so also one righteous act resulted in justification and life for all people. Jesus paid it all. Jesus paid the price for that death. He paid the price for that curse. He paid the price for you and I's sin. He paid the price for us to have eternal life. This is Easter Sunday morning. This is Resurrection Sunday. You know, Jesus did everything for us. And believe me, while they were all mourning and they were all concerned, and you know, we had a Good Friday service and, and it was a somber time remembering and thinking about Jesus' death on the cross. But Friday isn't the end of the story. Sunday morning was coming. The resurrection. I love uh, the radio commentator Paul Harvey. Uh, you know, he used to be on the air a lot, and he was always telling the rest of the story. You know, what happened later that most people didn't know, or maybe people weren't aware of. And you know, if you left on Friday, if you left Jerusalem on Friday, and you never heard any more of the rest of the story, what a sad condition your life would have been in. But listen, this morning, the rest of the story goes differently. Jesus didn't stay in the grave. He had been bringing people back to life all through his ministry. I, I love especially uh, the one story that we hear the most about, Lazarus. You know, how that he was a friend of Jesus and he had been sick and Jesus kind of tarried and didn't go as quickly as they wanted him to. And when he got there, he'd been dead for four days. And Jesus said, roll the stone away and called him out of the grave, you know. And he told his sisters before he called Lazarus out, I, <laughs> not me, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. That's who he was. He could call the dead back to life. And he could take up his own life once he laid it down. He said, nobody's taken my life. I have the power to, to lay my life down. I have also the power to take my life up again. And guess what? On Easter Sunday morning, Resurrection Day, that's exactly what Jesus did. He came back to life. He took his own life. I'm sure people were wondering after they knew all the things that Jesus had done in bringing people back to life, I'm sure people were wondering, will it happen to him? Because he'd been making promises even to his followers. Three days, three days, three days, and I'm going to be back. All they could think about was, you're going to be gone. 
you know? And, and even the religious leaders, you know, they misinterpreted what Jesus said. Jesus said, you, you tear this temple down, you destroy this temple, and I'll build it in three days. He wasn't talking about the temple in Jerusalem, the physical temple. He was talking about the temple of his own body. He warned them, I'll be back. Like Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, I'll be back. I can't imitate him very well. <laughs> but Jesus was making promises. I will return. This isn't going to be the end. You know what? I, I think there wouldn't have been as much sadness around the crucifixion, even though it was as horrible as it was, if people really knew that he was going to honor his promise, that he really was going to come back. This was everything. You know what? Easter isn't just about eggs and bunnies. We get so messed up with the commercialization of all the stuff that happens around us. And we get our focus off of what's really important. And today, this day is more about Jesus than anybody else. It's more about Jesus than it is all of the, all of the trappings that the commercialization has brought to this day. Listen, we should be celebrating what Jesus has done. You can believe when Jesus says something, it will happen. This was just more proof that we can trust everything Jesus says. You know, sometimes you wonder, can I trust this person? They seem to be telling me the truth. I don't know for sure, though. Jesus honored everything that he said. He promised one thing. He delivered one thing. And he came back just like he said he would come back. You know, there's so many times I think that, that we question uh, where is Jesus? What's Jesus going to do? If we just get into his word and read his word, let me tell you, it is true. It's not, if he can come back to life after being killed on the cross, don't you think he can honor his word in anything he gives us in it? We don't have to question it. A lot of people do, but we don't have to. We need to just take it at face value. Easter Sunday morning is evidence that Jesus speaks the truth, that Jesus will honor what he said he would do. This is good news, folks. I'd say it's great news. This is the best news. You don't have to die. That's what Jesus is saying. You know, I've, I've defeated death. I've defeated the grave. Nothing can hold us any longer. Oh, yeah, we, might, we may pass out of this physical life, but we can have eternal life. We can take one step out of this life and go through the door into the next life. We don't have to die. And that's all because of what Jesus has done. You know, there's going to be a reunion one of these days. There was a reunion when Jesus died and when he left this world and rose again. There was a reunion between him and God the Father. They had been separated because of our sin. But when that was all paid for and all taken care of and Jesus put his blood on the altar of sacrifice and gave us what we needed. He and the Father became one again. Just like you and I are going to be able to be one with our loved ones. We're going to be able to be one with Jesus. Man, I, I can't wait to get to heaven. Can you to think about, I get to see Jesus face to face. I get to thank him personally. Oh, I can do it now. But to see him and to be able to fall down in front of him and be so grateful Listen, eternity is a long time. I don't want to spend it in hell. I want to be in heaven with my loved ones and with Jesus. That's something to be thankful for. That's great news today that that possibility exists. You know, used to the church spent a lot of time thinking about heaven. I don't hear people singing or talking much about heaven anymore. We used to sing songs like, I'll fly away. Well, what were we talking about? We're going to fly on to heaven, right? Uh, what a day that will be. You know, looking forward to that day in heaven. I, I, I'm afraid sometimes that we've gotten so comfortable in this world that we forget that there's another place, another reunion. Oh, once in a while we think about our loved ones. We think, oh, I can't, I can't wait to see them again. But really, in reality, we ought to be thinking about heaven. Jesus bought the ticket for us. You know, there's not just two tickets to paradise. There's a ticket for everybody today. Easter Resurrection Sunday says you and I can have a ticket and it's free. It doesn't get any better than that. It doesn't get any better than that. I am so grateful this morning that Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even if he dies and everyone who lives and believes in me. This is the important part. Will never die. 
life. Today, God has offered us life, eternal life, eternal reunion. And this morning, we have the privilege of celebrating that. Now, I don't know today, maybe you've never taken advantage of that. Maybe today you're in a situation where you're, you're thinking, man, I, I, I don't know what eternity looks like for me. I've heard some people say, you know, I, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm afraid to die. You don't have to be afraid to die. Jesus has already taken the fear out of that for us. And I would encourage you today, if you haven't, ask Jesus for that ticket to paradise, to heaven, that today you would just come before him and say, Lord Jesus, I'm so sorry that I've done my own thing, that I've rebelled against you. I have sinned. I need your salvation. I need to be saved today. I need what you can give me in life. It's that simple. And he will. He will forgive you. He'll give you eternal life. And you'll be on a path that will be better than anything you've ever walked before. I can promise you that today because Jesus will honor that. Pray with me this morning. Father, you are so good to us. You bless us in so many ways. And Lord, just to think that someday there will be a reunion in heaven because of this day, because of the day we're celebrating, Easter, Resurrection Sunday, there is forgiveness for our sins. We can ask you to forgive us, to come into our life, to be Lord and Master for us to serve and honor you and to look forward to that reunion that we have in heaven. Thank you today, God, that Jesus paid the price, that he settled the question, that everything, Lord, that he has said is true. And help us today to grasp that. Help us to celebrate all that you've done for us. We thank you so much today. Uh, bless and guide each person here today. In Jesus' name, amen.